very beautiful morning to you out there. You are on to the Super Screen TV News at 10. I am Kiruka Iwe and now looking at the stories and the reports making the rounds. The Senate has confirmed Festos, Kayamo and six others as members of the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC. The confirmation was made after the Senate considered and adopted the report of its Committee on Banking, Insurance and Other Financial Institutions. Senator Rufa Ibrahim, PDP, Kwara State, who, who presented the report, said Kiyamo and the other nominees have been cleared by the Code of Conduct, Buri. Deputy Senate President, Senator Ikekwe Madu, who presided Ms. over Yankee plenary, taxed the nominees to live up to the expectations of Nigeria in the discharge of their duties. And it's, uh, the committee here by now that the Senate do confirm the nomination of the following as chairman and members of the board of Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, Mrs. Ronke Shokefun, chairman, Belu Garba, member, Brigadier General Joseph Okoluaru, member, Mustafa Adewale Mudashiru, member, Barista Festus Keyamo, member, Mr. Adewale Adeleke, member, we so submit. Thank you very much. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Mrs. Ronke Shokefun as chairman of the board of the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC. Those of us say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. <coughs> Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Belo Garba as member of the board of the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC. Those of us say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Barrister Festus E. Kayamo as a member of the Board of Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. I would like to congratulate these nominees whose uh, nominations have now been confirmed by the Senate. And because this is going to be a very, this is a very serious regulatory agency, I believe that they should take their job seriously because part of our problem as a country is our ability to regulate the system. And still in the Senate, the Senate has passed a bill to establish the Southwest Development Commission, the Southeast rather. The bill was passed Wednesday after consideration of the report of the Committee on Establishment and Public Service led by the Chairman, Senator Emmanuel Polka, briefing journalists after plenary Leader of the Southeast Caucus in the Senate, Ain Naya Abaribe, urged the President to promptly give assent to the bill, adding that it will speed up rehabilitation and reconstruction efforts which started after the Civil War. And the Majority Leader of the House of Representatives, Femi Gbajibimila, says the All Progressives Congress APC caucus in the House would scuttle any plan to override President Muhammad Buhari's veto of the 2018 Electoral Amendment Bill. Speaking with journalists at the National Assembly, Honorable Gbajibimila said APC has more than the number to stop the process. He also said the, the House needs the vote of at least two thirds of its members to override the President's veto. President Muhammad Dubari has expressed gratitude to Switzerland for returning funds stolen by corrupt government officials to Nigeria. The president, who expressed his appreciation while receiving letter of credence from the ambassador of Switzerland to Nigeria, George Stenner, at the presidential villa, said Nigeria is deeply grateful to Switzerland and for its support in, resusc in resuscitating the economy. In his reaction, the ambassador said Switzerland will continue to support Nigeria especially to end the conflict and the plight of internally displaced persons in the Northeast. And in commemoration of the World Anti-Corruption Day, civil society organizations have staged a peaceful protest over the alleged return of 322.5 million US dollars at Bachelot by the Swiss government. Speaking to journalists in Benin City, the leader of the group, David Golo, said the space of corruption has widened the gap between the rich and poor in the country. He urged government to ensure transparency and accountability in the utilization of the return funds. 
as we are here celebrating the anti-corruption day. Over 500 people is deployed across Nigeria to monitor the utilization of the recovered Abasha looted assets stashed in Switzerland. As you know, the Swiss government have returned $322.5 million, and this money is now going to be used as cash transfer for the poorest of the poor in Nigeria. And Anage, through a mantra project, monitoring recovered assets through transparency and accountability, is partnering with a group of civil cycle across the entire country with the support of the UK government to monitor how this money gets to the very poor of the country spoke also urged non-governmental organization NGO and all the relevant stakeholders to take proactive measures in the fight against corruption. We really need loads of them to support one another because it's like if we don't get support from our fellow women we really won't do much, we won't be able to do much but if we are able to garner support from our fellow women and our men inclusive we go a long way in fighting this corruption and See, the issue of corruption is now even uh, romancing the Nigerian youth of today. And that is why the National Health Council of Nigeria has taken it upon uh, itself to identify with uh, David Ugolo and his NH team to stand up against corruption. And now talking health. Nigerians have been urged to conduct a regular medical checkup to know their HIV status. A medical organization identified as Occupational Health and Safety Managers, OHSM, gave the advice while carrying out a voluntary testing and counseling exercise at the computer village here in Lagos State. The report tells us more. Human Immunodeficiency Virus HIV, an acquired immunodeficiency syndrome AIDS, is a virus that can be transmitted through contact with infected blood, semen, or vaginal fluids. A recent report by the United Nations Program on HIV and AIDS, UN AIDS, in 2017, shows that 3.1 million people in Nigeria are living with HIV AIDS, in which 2.8% are adults between 15 to 49 years of age, making Nigeria the second largest number of people living with HIV AIDS. To create awareness in HIV AIDS screening in Nigeria, the Occupational Health and Safety Managers, OHSM, is partnering with International Labour Organization, ILO, to conduct voluntary counselling and testing for Nigerians. This uh, program we are doing is focused on uh, ca voluntary counselling and testing of HIV AIDS amongst workers. We are looking at both the former and informal workers. HIV is a burden across the world. I mean, it is is a third leading cause of uh, health issues amongst um, amongst the population, mostly the workers. And here we are today. We're trying to also see what we can do. We're doing um, voluntary counselling, telling people more about AIDS. Uh, we counselling them to come to to this place to test and know their status. Knowing your status actually is one of the one of the key factors that actually help you. Uh, to survive HIV AIDS even when you have it. It's okay, but we expect more people to, to come out and get tested and also know more about it and how it's been transmitted. Some at the initial stage, some few, some are not really free, but at the end, after the counseling and advice and all that, most of them go home with joy and they feel happy about it. Speaking to Super Screen, some of the beneficiaries expressed satisfaction over the screening exercise, just as others lauded the initiative. Although people will be afraid to go and check it, because they know even if they are positive, they don't have money for the drugs, but it's not care from our government. Oh, I'm just trying to beg them, things like this should be continued, and those people that have been affected, they should try and look for a way to help them, to support them. And I feel realized when, when she was waiting for the, as my, my attention was was high and where she just marked it to her mic. Yeah, I feel good and it's an opportunity for people to know their status. For them to know their status so you know where to belong. So I will the next step to take. People don't know the essence of doing it. So government should increase this awareness so that people will get more they will have more knowledge, more reason why they should do it, why they should know their status. And it will help the society to go a long way at least in having to reduce the, 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 the rate of um, HIV uh, patient in, in the society. A lot of people are working on the city, they are not aware of their status. So this is a, a, another way to enable people to know their health status as far as HIV is concerned. The Ministry of Health, they should be more involved in creating awareness, not just at the high level, but to the grassroots, like in the marketplace, churches, schools. 
and ask her to pass the message down the line, then fund it, because it is a scheme that is capital intensive. Well, the of note is that the screening exercise is carried out in line with World AIDS Day, celebrated on December 1st, with the theme, Know Your Status. Away from that, and now we take a short break, and when we return, we'll give you business-related stories. Stay with us. As Nigerians prepare to march to the polls in 2019, first, we engage the vice presidential candidates in the 2019 NEDG Bonn presidential debate. Five candidates chosen to the stage in an intense debate. The nation is in search of the best candidate for the number two job. 2019 vice presidential debate. Friday, 14 December 2018. Live from the Congress Hall of the Transco Hilton Hotel, Abuja, 7 p.m. Live on all bond stations. Follow the conversations on all social media platforms. Hashtag 2019 debate. You welcome back and if you have just joined us, you are still watching Super Screen TV News at 10. And now talking business, the Petroleum Products Price and Regulatory Agency, PPPRA, has cautioned all your marketers against distorting the approved pump price of petrol. Executive Secretary PPRA, Abdul Qadir Sayidu, who disclosed this to journalists, said the growing speculation of an imminent increase in the price of petrol was being made by some interest groups. According to the agency, who is in charge of fixing the price of petrol and kerosene, the approved cost of PMS at retail filling stations has not changed beyond 145 naira per litre. And the Senate has mandated the National Inland Waterways Agency, NIWA, to ensure mandatory use of life jackets for passengers traveling through water in Nigeria. The upper chamber also mandated the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing to urgently intervene in the construction of the Lafayette Niger State Road. The decision by the Senate followed a motion sponsored by Senator Shaba Lafayette during plenary. Senators Benga Ashafa also supported the motion to build a bridge across the river Niger in order to save lives. On 1st December 2018, in which 19 persons aged between 12 and 19 years drowned while traveling across the river Niger. Further notes that the use of canoes and boats is the only available means of transportation for the border towns of Lafayette in Kwara and his neighbors in Niger State. This is, a, this is as a result of the abandonment of the 46-kilometer road project that should ordinarily link Kwara and Niger State, thus mitigating the incessant occurrence of both mishap in the riverine community. I could read the prayers even before we get there now, before we start considering the prayers. And in, that, in those of the, the two prayers that are very, very important, you mentioned the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, and you mentioned NIWA. We are about to start preparation consideration when the budget is submitted. The request we are going to make now for that road to be constructed has to be taken into cognizance, else nothing will be achieved. And still talking business, Minister of Transportation Rotimi Amechi says the federal government is working on the construction of a coastal rail line from Lagos through Ijebode, Ore and Bini City to honor port in River State. The minister who made this known in Abuja, 
During a briefing on the formation objectives he presented to the House of Representatives Committee on Land Transport, said the federal government will soon connect the federal capital territory and the capitals of the 36 states with rail lines. According to him, the drive to connect major cities in Nigeria through functional rail lines is part of the federal government's economic recovery and growth plans 2018 to 2020. The minister also said work had commenced on Idu Kaduna standard gauge line, noting that work on Idu Lagos rail line would have been completed by January 2019. And here we take another short break, and when we return, we'll give you foreign and sports-related stories. Stay with us. <laughs> 